For the past three years, we've heard a lot of excuses from the Democratic Party as to why they lost to Trump, but none of these excuses say we abandoned the middle class and became the party of elitists and empty promises. One of the big ones I've heard since November 9th, 2016, is that it was either the Green Party or Libertarians' fault. They siphoned votes away from Hillary Clinton! The Green Party is a powerful force to be reckoned with, with their presidential candidate that was arrested in 2012 for trying to be included onto the debate stage. I mean, the sheer power they must have by not even being allowed on the debate stage. And, and the Libertarians were clearly dosing the Democratic voters in Wisconsin and Michigan with ample amounts of marijuana, and they just plum forgot the one time Hillary Clinton said their state's names in a joke. I mean, those potheads caused those voters to space on the day, or worse yet, vote for Trump because it was hilarious. And as the Democrats have always said, weed is a gateway drug to republicanism and fiscal conservatism. Now, a majority of these excuses make it sound like Clinton was owed the votes of the Greens, Independents, and Libertarians. Let's set the record straight. No candidate, big or small, is owed any Americans' votes. Votes have to be earned. And these citizens that voted for a third party let the Clintons know that she did not earn their vote. To say that Hillary Clinton is owed the votes of anyone that leans to the left to any degree is basically advocating for an oligarchy. Kings and queens to be coronated by the Church of Wall Street and the Monastery of Money. And I believe that was one of the things that sparked a revolution to create this country was not being down with the oligarchy. <clears throat> now, I've said it once, and I guess I have to say it again, but Hillary Clinton's sheer existence is becoming unconstitutional. Look, I've met a lot of people touring around the country, and the folks that voted for a third party were trying to get them enough votes to get federal funding for this upcoming election. And this idea was seen in the local elections in 2018. As we were celebrating a blue wave in Congress, we also saw some third party waves standing up to the shores of an oppressive two party system. Fellow comedian, filmmaker, and former guest on this podcast, Travis Irvine ran for governor of Ohio in 2018 under the libertarian ticket. Recently, Travis wrote a piece for the Columbus Free Press that points out how the third parties are not responsible for the Republican victory in that state. Ohio has notoriously been controlled by the Republicans, and Travis ran in an effort to dethrone the true Red Scare. As Irvine says in the article, the perfect outcome would have been for myself and the Green Party candidate, Constant Goodell Newton, to both receive 3% of the vote so we could meet the arbitrary benchmark set by Ohio Republicans to maintain ballot access for our political parties for the next four years. Another aspect of the perfect outcome would have been for our total amounts of votes to cause Republican Mike DeWine to lose to Democrat Richard Cordray. The Ohio Republican Party has had a stranglehold on our state government for far too long, as evidenced by the aforementioned 3% benchmark being set for minor parties and signed into law at all. The Ohio Republicans set a arbitrary benchmark of 3%, which means who they control who their opponents get to be. It's basically the Democrats. This ensures that voters show a disdain in the binary and that disdain turns into apathy and cynicism. It also blocks any outside voices from coming into the narrative. It removes the idea of choice and makes you vote for a letter, a color, or a mascot instead of ideas and policies. We can see the same thing executed by the Democrats in the primaries now. 
they set arbitrary benchmarks in order to get rid of any progressive voice so their corporate paid off candidates can gang up on the candidate that's setting records and was cheated out of the last election. I am of course talking about one Bernie Sanders. The idea also pushes the narrative that there are only two voices allowed in American politics, Democrat or Republican. I mean, it's a hack idea. It's no different than the comedian that goes on stage and makes jokes about how white people do a thing like this, and but black people do a thing like that. Or women are one way and men are another. Right? Binary views hammer down generalization, cut off the diversity of thought, and engage us into black or white lines of thought. And that's the question we should all have. What about brown? Or gray? Or Roy G. Biv? I mean, if it's all black or white, red or blue, then why the hell does Crayola have the need for so many damn colors, right? We can just have two really big crayons and just call it a day. Speaking of hacks, on a recent episode of his show, Bill Maher did a monologue where he addressed the idea of binary. In the monologue, Marr makes the argument that we have many flavors of Pop-Tarts and Gatorade, but when it comes down to politics, there are only two choices. And he boasts that that is a good thing. Good thing for who? Regardless of who wins, Marr gets to keep his show and get richer with his pack generalizing jokes that show us how out of touch he really is while the rest of us have to deal with stagnant wages, unaffordable health care, and ever-expanding prison system. But hey, we have a thousand flavors of Gatorade we can choke down after we get arrested for a nonviolent crime or protesting the dream of oligarchy. Yay for Yellow 65! <clears throat> Mar also points out that a lot of other countries have multiple parties, and we should be excited that we only have two. I mean, this is basically his smug way of saying, hey, Americans, you guys can't handle all this choice. It's his fun, very special way of calling us all dumb. Americans aren't dumb. I mean, the middle class is much smarter than they are convinced to be. Once they shed the programming from the propaganda of the American war economy perpetuated by both parties, then we'd effectively be able to vote for a third, fourth, or fifth party without this childish blame gaming. Back in Ohio, the unfortunate reality is that Irvine and the Green Party's constant Goodell Newton did not win. Travis goes on to point out, my campaign was easily polling better with Republicans who didn't like DeWine leading up to the election. Multiple Tea Party groups around the state had endorsed me, while other Ohio conservative networks were encouraging their supporters to either vote for me or leave the governor race blank. My campaign team knew where our support was coming from and leaned in as much as we could. We challenged DeWine's conservative credentials when it came to taxes, spending, and gun rights. Travis's 80,000 voters voted for him because they wanted to vote for him. They liked what he stood for and the challenges he presented to Republican Mike DeWine. And the ones that didn't probably didn't vote at all. And the most likely outcome was that if Travis Irvine wasn't in that race, they would have chosen to refrain from their right to vote. And same goes for the Green Party in the general elections. And take the same principle and apply it to a larger scope of the 2016 election. Of the people that voted for Jill Stein or Gary Johnson, voted because these candidates because they wanted to vote for these candidates. If they weren't in the race, these voters would have just stayed at home, which would have meant that the Clintons and the DNC would have just blamed the stay-at-home voters for their cowardice. But the binary vitriol never ends. Irvine continued in his piece about the aftermath of the election. Despite some silly analysis by dumpy know-nothings who still feel the need to troll me on the internet, Cordry and the Ohio Democratic Party lost because they no longer have the support of the union-loving working-class voters of Mahoning County. 
the Ohio electoral map in 2018 was almost identical to when Trump won in 2016. DeWine and his team deserve credit for shrewd tactics they used days before the election. Not only did DeWine get former Ohio Governor John Kasich, Kasich's endorsement, but he also got President Trump's and held rallies, separately of course, with both men in different corners of the states. Add to this the fact that Mike DeWine wrote his campaign a check for $3 million the last week before the election. And this was the same problem in 2016 with Clinton. Not only was it revealed that Clinton was using underhanded tactics to defame Sanders, she was also out of touch and has a heinous past. She lost to states that she didn't visit and only focused where she could get big money donors. She raised over $8 billion in the 2016 election and lost. In addition, you had everything that happened with Cambridge Analytica and the sale of our data by Facebook that led to the victory of the president we have now. It was a perfect storm that led us to where we are now and third parties are left in the wake of it just like we are. Blaming third parties and their voters only sows more divide. It's a result of black and white binary thinking that blocks the diversity of thought that the human mind is capable of. It robs us the right of critical thinking and makes us complicit in a system where power is ruled by monetary means and not the will of the people. Voting for a third party is not a spoiler. It's a revolution. It's the same kind of revolution that this country was founded on. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content that's on this video, you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy. It talks about a lot of the same issues that you hear in these videos. Uh, and I've got dates coming up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for my entire tour schedule and all the tickets and details for these shows. You can go to my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N Noodles Comedy. Dot com And while you're there, you can uh, sign up for my email list, you can become a patron, you can check out past episodes of this shows, as well as getting your uh, tickets and details for all of my live tour dates. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the road.